to the team that I so admire, our advocacy team. Uh, you've been about for how many years now? I believe this is our fourth. I want to say our fourth year. You're still in your emphasis yeah. as far as yeah. organizations here go, I think. I believe we were just taking off and then COVID hit. Yeah. 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 Sort of yeah. I want to say it was back. like five, four or five. Well, yeah. as far as yeah. I'm concerned, these are brave, courageous ladies who take their faith and their Christianity very seriously as they speak up for all of us at times when either we cannot or that we are too timid to do. We know that we have a team here that believes that as we were told today, and we need to hear over and over again, we are indeed recipients of God's gifts. And one of those huge gifts is creation. And we are witnessing, unfortunately, little by little, the demise of that creation that God has given to us. So based on our ELCA support, uh, our team is here to tell us what we as individuals can do. I know at times we feel what we are doing makes no difference. I challenge you. I challenge you not to believe that, not to give up on hope, to continue to fight for your children, that this is the world that we want for them to have a better than what we have. So there are things that we can do, right? You're going to tell Absolutely. us how to do it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, Erin. Thank on. you. Thank you, Daddy. Um, no. And um, I'm just but one um, representative of our advocacy team. So if we could perhaps all introduce ourselves. Um, as Daddy said, I'm Erin Badeko, and I've been involved in the advocacy team since we since it got going four or five years ago. Um, and we are involved in trying to bring uh, heightened awareness around what's out there, that what Lutherans are already doing. We're not creating anything new. We're just trying to be the connection between the wider, broader ELCA and their advocacy work and what that can look like here at UDLC and how it applies to us and the things that we can personally do both individually and at a congregational level. Um, so that's that's me, and that's how we got going. And then I'll pass it to Pam. Okay, um, I'm Pam Stites, and I I wore our T-shirt today, so you can oh, all see what we're about. But somebody made sure read it. Um, and we've got justice and health and food and love for all. Good. Yeah. So that's love that's it. kind of our slogan that we're living by and living into, and hope that you'll join us at some point. I'm Kathleen. Um, I am just now recently joining the advocacy team, but I'm really excited about it. So um, jumping on board uh, any way I can. We're glad to be here. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. I'm Chris Tranchita, and started with Erin, and um, you know, just glad we were always happy to have new people come. Like if you're interested in um, advocacy and um, just, I think our, we're just trying to do what we feel like Jesus would do, you know, and, and advocate for people that need people to, to advocate for them. Yeah. And you can pick and choose, right? I mean, if you're okay. focusing on one thing, and, and this is in your heart, and something that you so believe in, then you're not making, you know, a 24-7 lifetime commitment. But if, you know, I joined them back when we were doing racial injustice, something that's near and dear in my heart. And... Yeah, we, we advocate for lots of different things and you can pick and choose what you want to help us with. And then we have our Nancy, I'm uh, Nancy Bursich. Um, and just to add to what they said is we are always welcoming people. And um, one of the things that the team does, you don't even have to make a significant commitment. We send out newsletters and it says this is what we're advocating for. And a lot of the times you find out, oh, our Congress is thinking about doing this for the environment. They're iffy. You want to write a letter. It's as simple as that. That's a lot of advocacy. It's just standing up and saying, yeah, this group is doing this, you know, and wow, you know, that's a good idea. And it's maybe lagging just because nobody's really interested in it, not because everybody doesn't agree. They may all think it's there's other priorities. 
So we advocate and point out, you know, this is important to people. This is important to your constituents. It's important to the larger ELCA. Our church is behind this. And I just feel compelled to emphasize that this is not a political organization. This is an arm of the ELCA. And at times, people misconstrue <clears throat> what this is all about. We are following through on what our mother organization our, and our baptismal promise and our <laughs> baptismal <laughs> promise exactly. even perhaps more we, <laughs> <laughs> yes. and, and like as i said a lot of times it's everyone agrees on it mm -hmm. but it's just not anyone's priority so it just sits there and sits there and sits there and never gets done and we need to push and say hi this is important to people it's important to all of us very much so and and as as daddy said um you know we work very hard to avoid partisanship yes mm -hmm. political in our opinions it's not a bad word it's how things happen in our society it's how rules are created and how um regulations and dictates and things come to be that we all follow it's the partisanship we want to avoid um so you know it's not a matter of telling anyone who to vote for or what party to be a part of but rather to just speak for the issues that are important to you to whomever your legislator may be or your friends or your family and to be a voice out there lifting up these important topics or topics that are important to you and there's many of them um with that said we are not legislative experts <laughs> um none of us are lawyers none of us are politicians um you know we have just the knowledge that we've gathered individually on a lot of these topics and so um our goal here is to connect you and to pass on the information that we have and tell you where you can go to find more information um, or to get more involved should you wish to do that so that's a little disclaimer if we say we don't know we'll try and find out for you um, so with that said we're going to get started um, just connecting it back to the elca um, this is from their social statement it's a little antiquated perhaps but it's still good um, it is in hope of God's promised fulfillment that we hear the call to justice. It is in hope that we take action. When we act interdependently and in solidarity with creation, we do justice. We serve and keep the earth, trusting its bounty can be sufficient for all and sustainable. So that is the statement that brings us, kind of connects us to what Dr. Robinson has been presenting for the past few weeks. Um, you know, I was able to listen in um, on his session last week, and he something I heard him say is, you know, we have a role in the world. We are the image of God in the world. But God doesn't act for his own self. God acts for benefit of others. And therefore, if we are acting in God's image, it is upon us to act for the benefit of others. Um, and so this is, this is the connection. Um, this is a statement from Lampa. So Lampa is the, the state agency that takes the wider efforts of the ELCA advocacy groups and brings them into Pennsylvania, makes it specific. Um, and we have worked very closely over the past few years with a woman by the name of Tracy DePasquale. She's visited here a couple of times pre-pandemic um, and been with us via Zoom since then. Um, supporting us, letting us know what Lampa is involved in and how we can be supporting their efforts. What do the letters stand for? Letters stand for Lutheran Advocacy Ministry in Pennsylvania. Great question. Thank you. Um, and their website is a fantastic resource and where I pulled the bulk of the information that we're presenting today. Um, as Christians, we are called to love our neighbor and care for our common home. We do that in personal lives and in our life together by living simply and being good stewards of the environment. We also do this by encouraging policies that support the common good. I think that our congregation here takes it very much to heart to act in an individual level, in an environmentally conscious way. I'm sure all of us have that cabinet at home that is stuffed with reusable bags <laughs> that we pull out every time we go to Whole Foods or Aldi or wherever it is we're going. We all have those. But the difference between that and advocacy is, is you know, taking those reusable bags to the grocery store yourself 
and the ban on plastic bags that was just enacted in Philadelphia. So now 5 million people have to do that, right? That's the difference between individual action and advocacy. You're extending it to a much wider audience and putting these policies in place for a much larger demographic, um, which makes a bigger impact. Excuse me, so what you're saying is that Upper Dublin possibly could have a similar. Absolutely, um, that would be an advocacy opportunity. Yes. Yep, if that's something you'd like to see in the community, that would be something you could reach out, reach out to your, who is the, I'm in Cheltenham, so forgive me for not knowing exactly how the township is structured. We have our township commissioners that we, we would reach a, out to. a UPLC member, uh, Cheryl Knight, who is a commissioner, mm -hmm. who certainly would be open to us. So there you go, to her. opportunity number one. Um, this is a video from um, LAMPA and the ELCA Advocacy um, Office. The, in, every year in September, there is a Sunday called God's Work Our Hands, where we are encouraged to kind of take on a project that's important to us and, and, and as a congregation. And, and we're hopeful to get that implemented here uh, at UDLC. But this is a video they made in conjunction with that. Am I going to have you? Is that going to come through? I'm going to get the lights. Is that audio coming through or is it just coming out of my computer? Oh, hold on. No. Your computers. Computer. It's meant. Is there a better way to get that up there? Or should I just turn it up? I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is that Yes. It's All much easier. Right. Can I get yeah. the lights? Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Diane. As members of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, we are called to be God's hands in the world. Whether it's caring for our neighbors, protecting our children, or seeking justice for the most vulnerable among us, it's our duty to go out in the world and change it for the better. We live these values every day. Our Lutheran Disaster Response and ELCA World Hunger Program serve communities near and far. We are a church that rolls up our sleeves and gets to work. I spent many summers working at a Christian church camp in North Carolina. And on the first week of camp, we brought in more than 100 youth from an urban setting. And during that week, we took them out to the mountains. And as we approached the first waterfall, I heard a youth gasp. And I said, what's wrong? She said, I've never seen a waterfall. If we want to sustain those experiences and maintain those natural settings, we need to have a conversation about how we can care for them. And God calls us to be a part of that story, to work for change, to care for all that God has created. By not being good stewards of what we have, then the impact or the consequences of those natural disasters can be bad. We need to always be aware that those things are going to happen and we should always have that spirit of cooperation to help our sisters and brothers. Studies have shown that congregations where pastors talk about climate change, have people who are more likely to engage in taking care of creation and to advocate for climate solutions. I think it is our duty to love the world that God gave us because in faith we practice loving each other but also loving the world as well. God gave us a beautiful world and it's my responsibility to care for it, protect it and leave it better than we found it. Congregations are already doing a lot. They're putting solar panels on their roofs. They're looking for ways to reduce their carbon footprint and use less energy. They're planting community gardens. They're cleaning up waterways. But you know what? We can do more. The ELCA is partnered with Eco America's Blessed Tomorrow program, a faith community and initiative that empowers climate action and advocacy. The partnership helps us strengthen our climate leadership and fusing it into all of our aspects of our church. You can take action today. Get involved with ELCA's creation care programs. Talk about climate change with your families, friends, colleagues, and local congregations, and inspire others to do what they can to protect our climate and this world that we call home.
together we can truly be God's hands in the world. Please join us. Uh, anything that you see up on the screen today, um, I can send you or link you to or provide copies of. So um, just wanted that, that said, but um, that is this kind of the, the position of the ELCA in terms of what we sh can and should be doing to address these issues. So there's a variety of ways, and now we're going to get specific. Um, advocacy is not only talking about policy and, and legislation, but that is part of it. And it's a very important part because entities that are perhaps advocating for policies that are contrary to the interests of creation, have many, many paid lobbyists. People who do this for a living, who live in DC, who live in Harrisburg, who make lots of money to be really up in people's faces. And the entities that advocate for pro-environment policy have a much smaller pool of resources to pull from. I attended a Zoom meeting this week about one of the um, initiatives that we're going to mention. And the, the organizer, who is a pro-environmental lobbyist, said, we have seven. The coal and fossil fuel interest, uh, <laughs> interests have 250. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So our voices have to lift up because there is just such a disparity between what is being pushed for. Um, and it's going against creation. It's going for money and for um, stakeholders. It's going against creation because that's not traditionally seen as where the money is, right? These pro-environment policies. So, so Aaron, you're speaking with those numbers statewide? State. This state. So just in one state, our state, mm -hmm. it's yeah. those odds. This was a, a person from a group called Penn Environment, which I'll mention. They're a really great, um, advocacy agency um, that LAMPA has a lot of connection with and does a lot of work with. Um, and so this was a person from Penn Environment. So in Pennsylvania, 7 to 250. So, so the odds are stacked against. Yeah. Well, we're a big coal state. So yeah. Yeah. that's where yes. it comes yeah. from. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The natural gas. Yeah. And natural gas. Yeah. And we're yeah. running the worst carbon emissions. Yes, there yes. are. Yes. Yep. So I'm not going to go much into federal level advocacy today, but um, there are a couple of things that I think are very um, much relevant to us having just gone through a natural disaster um, and, and being so wonderfully um, resourceful and um, efficient in responding to that at a local level. Um, but we need to kind of remember that A, it could very likely happen again and we may not have the same resources to it, you know, to respond to it a second time. Where would those resources come from? And also that this is happening all over our country and people are dealing with the fallout of these types of disasters every day. Um, and so as people of faith, what the ELCA is encourages, encouraging us to do is to say, the way we respond to disasters at a federal level matters to us. Uh, yeah, why have you been up there? Oh, there you okay. Um, <clears throat> so, there are several, and you can see these are links here, to two different acts um, moving through Congress. There's a Senate Act and a House Act. Um, and in this one, by, the first is bipartisan, but it's a talking about how reforming our disaster recovery, um, increasing transparency, raising commitments to long-term resiliency when there's reconstruction, and community development block grants. Now, again, there's a lot of specific language language within this. Um, but these are two things that the ELCA is saying, hey, these are happening now. We need to say that we support this. And, and so a lot of times there will be a pretty simple um, 
form that you can go to tell Congress that disaster response is a priority for people of faith. It will link you to the different legislation that they're talking about. And then down here at the bottom, for people who are busy or feel like they don't have the language, um, there are already drafted letters that you can simply fill in your name and your address because they need to know which legislator to send it to. Um, and then they're editable. So if you wanted to say, hey, I live in the community of Upper Dublin and we just faced this devastating tornado and our neighbors are impacted and we want you to know that, you know, the way that this is responded to matters to us. You can edit it and do that, or you can just put your name in and send it off. But it's a quick action that will then be, you know, raise up your voice as not just an individual of Upper Dublin, but as a Lutheran. Will you be leaving information that we can hear? Yes, yeah, so I um, can link I can send the slides. I can also link you to all of this. I didn't print out the letter because it's kind of the easiest way is to fill this out and shoot it off. I do have some letters on some other items, but anybody, we're going to take at the end, um, if you're interested in being in receiving a specific link or information, we'll take names and emails. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I received that because I was originally, and I just think oh, that's so fabulous because you can just press on the link and get you to the letter. And there have been some of these links in the weekly email, like this one of them. This could, like this is not. So this could certainly go there. It could, if it, yeah, we could ask. Yeah. We also have a whole resource page under adult forms. Yes. So adult mm -hmm. forum resources. Okay. And we have this Lampo's is on site. there. Um, I think that's what might be on there, mm -hmm. whatever, and anything else that you want to add, if yeah. you send it directly to Emily, she'll add it and just say add it to the adult resource page on creation care. That's Emily in the office. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Emily okay. Bristol. Yeah. Or right. you can send it to me. I don't care. I can get it to her. But, okay. but for those of you who are here, for all of you, know, we have a lot of different resources already hooked up the uh, statement from the um, ELCA, we have Lampus websites, we have uh, a whole bunch, but please, you know, just see what else you want to add to it. We're trying to get current. Yeah. Um, one of the other things about this particular bill, if you go through and read it, it's particularly focused on um, HUD and uh, low income groups in around the country. So we know that those groups are most impacted by these disasters. They just don't have the resources to get back on their feet, right? So this legislation is really focused on making sure that federal dollars go right to those low income communities. So that's just another reason to pursue this. Um, you can also um, sign up for it. Both the ELCA and LAMPA will send out what they call action alerts, which is probably what you're getting, Emily, which is like, these are the things that are moving in Congress right now and clicking on links that will take you to letters like this. And so it's, you know, I'm very guilty of having the best um, intentions of sending <laughs> letters and, and getting to 11 o'clock at night and going, oh, crap, I did not do that. So I like these because um, I will, it's very, it's very quick. And I, you know, I, I encourage you to look into it in depth, but I also know that LAMPA and the LCA do a lot of due diligence and figuring out are these things that are worthy of our advocacy. And so I also feel comfortable to put my name on there. So it, it's, it's kind of where your comfort lies, but. Um, and it's not just um, the, the uh, United States Congress and Senate, it's our local mm -hmm. people too that need to hear. Absolutely. Oh yes, and so yeah. we're going to get into state, yeah, um, state legislators now. And there's kind of, there's a lot coming up in Pennsylvania right now, and that is very much where Lampa is focused this year. Each year they identify specific areas that they're going to focus on, um, and creation care this year is one of them. And I would venture to say will be into next year as well because of all the legislative opportunities that are coming up, um, and so. They're focused on two priorities this year. Number one is addressing climate change. And number two is working to secure clean air, land, and water for all. So they're working on prevention and they're working on response. There's already been a lot of damage done, which is affecting our air quality, our water quality. So what can we do to address that while also working to um, decrease the contributing factors 
to climate change. Um, and so this is one that I was asked about and had to do some research on because I didn't know much about it, I'm ashamed to say. And, and I still have a, you know, a, a okay understanding, but it's something that's very important and it's very immediate. Um, this is called the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative, and it's, it's called REGI by people who know what they're talking about. <laughs> um, and essentially, you can see here the, the map of the Northeast United States. PA is the only state not participating in this initiative as of right now. Um, every other state, and Virginia was just added. So add that to the picture up there. Virginia was just added. PA is not added. Um, but just so you understand what it is, it's a partnership between Northeast states, which kind of allows them to place caps on greenhouse gas emissions from electric power plants. So that includes coal, that includes nuclear, anything that's generating electricity, you know, they're going to cap it and have them pay a fee to, you know, uh, offset whatever it is they're putting out into the atmosphere. I ideally moving them toward reducing. It's not the idea isn't to make money, although that's a good byproduct. It's to get them to reduce their emissions over the next um, by 2025 and then by 2050. So there's different, you know, landmark years that they're trying to get to um, to reduce carbon dioxide. So I have another little video to show you about this, and then I'm going to tell you why it is important. If I can get to where I want to go. Hold on one second. While she's doing that, um, when she sent me these slides, sent, sent our group these slides, I, this one particularly appalled me that Pennsylvania was not a part of this. Yeah. So I clicked on the link and put in my address and got ready to send the letter and decided to edit the letter and literally wrote the first paragraph about our torpedo and about how appalled I was that we did not jump immediately into this art Reggie or whatever we're calling it. I mean, because I, I just, I, you know, I didn't, I didn't mind like being pretty forceful in my letter because I was shocked. So, and that was a real easy link. I know Karen will get there. Yep, for, for all of you to do it then. <laughs> It was just so easy because uh, I never know who my legislators are. I'm terrible like that. But this tip does it for you. It's amazing. Well, on state and local. Yeah, most state, this was local. Most this, I mean, this was state. state yeah, this was right. right. yeah, yeah, in my head. I couldn't tell you. Yeah, no, no. Oh, right. Right. Yeah. Oh, oh, here it. I'm sorry. I have to. There's some other. Now. Is I the sound down on the video itself? But some communities have long faced more than their share of the harms from pollution and will suffer more from the impacts of climate change in the future. We now have a chance to do something about that. Pennsylvania is considering becoming part of a program called the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative, or REGI. Under this program, the state would place a cap on the amount of carbon pollution coming out of electric power plants. Pennsylvania is one of the top five worst states in the country when it comes to harmful carbon dioxide emissions. Under REGI, power plants must pay for the dirty carbon pollution they cause. The money they pay can be used for energy efficiency and clean energy projects to create jobs. It can also help families and small businesses including those in your community, save more money on their energy costs. We have the power, duty, and constitutional right to protect the quality of the air that we breathe. Current Reggie states have already cut carbon pollution by half. With your support, Pennsylvania can join them. Joining Reggie is good for everyone because it is part of a just transition to a stronger economy, cleaner communities, and healthier families. So that was from Penn Environment, that group that I mentioned earlier. Um, and, and two notes, and thank you for doing the lights. Yeah. <laughs> um, two notes there. One, I don't know if you caught when they said we have a constitutional right. PA is one of the only, only states in the country 
that has environmental stewardship written into its constitution. Um, and so there is every justification for taking the step as well as it is. It's, it's in our constitution, uh, our state constitution. Um, the other piece is that there is some good news on this and then there's some bad news or possibly bad news. It was, there was a, a commission that voted I think about two weeks ago, okaying or paving the way for us to join Reggie next year. So if things remain as they are, PA will join Reggie. However, there are currently two pieces of legislation and two resolutions that are moving in the state legislature this week that would prevent us from joining oh, by effectively taking away the ability to place these caps on greenhouse gas emitters. And what is the justification given for that? It's economic. The yeah. no. It's economic. Of course. It's the coal lobbyists, yeah. it's the fossil yeah. fuel lobbyists, it's the people who stand to make a lot of money or to lose a lot of money if these fines are imposed. So that's where the advocacy is really immediate this week. Um, and so the link that I gave to Pam addresses that directly, sends to your legislators, please vote no on these initiatives, these, these resolutions and on these bills. And it's linked here in the PowerPoint, which I can again send to you or send you the link directly to, um, to the, this is what it looks like, PA Climate Program at Risk. We're on the verge of joining one of the most successful programs in the nation to reduce climate pollution. Um, but these climate attacks are, they're moving. And um, it's unusual to see a lot of movement. So it actually is moving. And, and we want to, this is not what we want to see moving. This is moving in the opposite direction. Um, and so this is that message that you can fill out and then it will send that message to your specific legislators. So that's Reggie. I do have some information printed that um, can be passed around. Part of what's also linked in this slideshow are these, what they call Reggie one pagers. And they encourage you to download and then email these to your legislator with your letter. Should you choose to write your own letter? This is something you can attach to it because they make the point that we feel like legislators already know this stuff. <laughs> they don't. They have so much stuff coming across their desk. So many issues being advocated for or pushed against or whatever that they really don't know the specifics and why it matters. Um, and so they encourage us to send some of these, you know, information, um, little one pagers. And, and this, I have a question. Of course. What you're saying is, it, it seems to me very adversarial. Those who want, those who don't. Uh, I'm being just totally, totally idealistic. There has to be a way that these companies who employ a lot of people and be helped to change that. I mean, that, that we can work together somehow. I think that that it's not. I mean, I think we need that train of thought, right? Like, or else it certainly won't happen. We need that train of thought. And part of this is that you know how the money that will be, a, you know, brought in from these caps is then reinvested into opportunities like that. How do we convert this coal-fired power plant into? a community solar distribution center, for example, when community solar is something that we're going to talk about next. I mean, so what are the grapes that we could have out there for these companies? Right. Well, and one of these pages goes over how beneficial, I only made a few copies of each, so I can make additional um, if, if there's some that you'd like to take home if they if you don't have them in front of you. Um, um, can you give me, I'll just quickly them. Okay. Um, but in terms of the one that we're on right here, actually, so one of the nuclear power plants, the Beaver Valley Nuclear Power Plant, was set to close because they, they simply can't compete with their coal 
counterparts. Um, but now that Reggie seems to be imminent and the coal producers are going to be taxed in effect or you know assessed these, these kind of damages, if you will, for greenhouse gas emissions, it makes them competitive again. And so they're going to stay open. Um, and you know, nuclear has its faults for sure, but it, it is a cleaner source of energy in the short term than coal is. Can I add something to it's in, in, in response to Dottie's question, not exactly the track you went on, but I think what's it's, it's important also for us to recognize that these issues are really complex. And so for instance, these um, fossil fuel, the, like fossil fuel industry, the coal industry, these huge corporations that have tons and tons of money, primarily employ people who are who do not have a lot of money. They primarily employ people who um, who are blue collar workers, right? Low low income jobs, um, and so even though they're huge corporations with lots of people attached to them, the majority of those people don't actually have the power, um, and so it's the the small number of people have the majority of money and power um, and and legislators do respond to volume. So it's often volume of money um, and lobbyists have a lot of money and power and fossil fuel industry CEOs have a lot of money and power, um, but they also respond to volume of, uh, of, of advocacy, of information that they're getting from constituents. And so if we and other sort of ordinary individuals who are not at the top of that food chain um, do make it known that this is important, um, then they're more likely to respond. And that includes people who don't have a lot of power but are in the industry, right? So um, labor unions are a part of this conversation as well, right? Because if, um, if unions within that industry have more power and are able to advocate for, for instance, the health and safety of the workers, um, that's more likely to make a difference to legislators. Um, so it's, it's complex, right? It's not just one thing or the other. Um, and so in that way, I think to Dottie's point, there can be some, um, some nuancing of the issue so that we don't feel like, oh, it's us versus them. It's, it, it's not, it's people versus industry maybe, but it's not environmentalists versus coal, coal workers. Um, and so in that way, we really are, um, we really do have a lot of the same sort of interests. Um, and the more we put this information across the desks of legislatures, they don't read every letter. They can't possibly read every letter, but they have staffers who go, okay, this whole pile of letters is advocating for Reggie or for community solar or whatever the thing is. And this pile of letters is advocating for you to put more money into the coal industry. And, and so the more we can communicate this importance, the, the more likely they are to respond. I don't know if that's helpful or clarifying at all, but. Sure, but if I could add something else, like you said, it's not just advocating to your legislators, it's advocating to people you know. Mm -hmm. I know for my son, he's 17 and his friends. Climate is the issue. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, if you say to your sons, your daughters, your grandchildren, this is up there, they might write letters. Yeah. All mm -hmm. you have to do is click here and they'll be like, yeah, I'll tell my friends, click here. It's something easy they can do. Mm -hmm. And it's, they're not voters yet, but they will be. They're constituents, it's their future. Mm -hmm. You know, and if it's something you believe in, you can advocate to others and say, you know, this is important. Is this important to you? Look at this. Did you know this? You don't even have to say it's important. You say, did you know this? And they may say no or yes. I have a question about whether it's more effective to send an actual letter, you know, physical letter, or to click on those things and sign in front of those petitions. Um, you know, I, I'm sure Lampa probably has a specific answer to that. I know that she, Tracy has told me, and one thing we'll do today, there's another um, initiative around what's called community solar, and that's what went out in the weekly email as well, where I have letters, and if you're interested in signing them, you can, and then Tracy will hand deliver them to legislators. Mm -hmm. And that is more impactful than just getting in the mail and having a staffer open it. Um, I would say, you know, 
if you have the time and you can write an individualized letter that's not a form letter because they can identify form letters they, they're not useless but they, yeah. they can tell um that that's impactful and then you know that like click cure send what we wrote thing would be next but anything is better than nothing so if all you have time for or the will for at the moment is to click there then do it that's okay that's perfectly okay Something else that works, pick up the phone and call. Yes, if yeah, you can leave messages, yeah, yeah. talk you'll, to people. You'll talk to a staffer and you'll say, um, I'd like to advocate against this bill. And they'll say, you know, give me your name and address exactly. and write it so down. So if you call their, if you call their local office rather than their yep. Harrisburg or DC office, yep. that's also more significant. You're more likely to get in touch with somebody personally. I wrote at some point years ago when I was making dinner and I picked up the phone and it was my state legislator. I got your letter. Oh, wow. I was like, Interesting. <laughs> he's like, I, I like what you had to say, but I have a question about this. What do you think of this? Oh, good. Um, I mean, they do respond. I mean, that was a personal letter, but he did respond. So there you go. So you don't probably get personal responses from form letters. You might get one from a personal letter, right? It was, you know, and that, that was online that I was emailed. But I do email because simply because right now this is like she said, this is urgent. Yeah. And awesome. it takes a while for right. them to get there. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have a well, I just wanted to make a remark that um it's interesting that this is getting through to some young people. Uh I had took my grandson out for lunch one day. It's one way I could get him face to face like this, you know. And we ordered service and we had straws and we said. You're not going to use that. <laughs> I said, of yeah. course not. <laughs> you send him this link and say, look what I heard in church today. And he's going to send that to 10 friends, and they're going to send it to 10 friends, and they're all going to start writing letters. And so things like on the email links, they're good at links. They things love like links. refusing straws or refusing plastic bags or whatever, like, those are important individual actions, but advocacy has so much more power. I do understand what yeah. you're saying. Well, no, no, no. But no. advocacy has gotten through to my grandson yeah, on right. straws. I want to disagree with you. No, because individual action is important too. Um, but the but it's the it's industries and lobbyists that have the power and the money. And so, you know, if I individually refuse every straw that's ever offered to me, that does make a difference. It adds up over time, but it's not making the same impact that taking down fossil fuel companies has. Right. And talking to the store and saying, why do you have straws? Mm -hmm. Is um, by the way, Dunkin' Donuts used to have all styrofoam cups. Mm -hmm. They now have all paper cups. That's a result. Isn't that interesting? Yes. Yeah. I'm going to pass around, and, and we're going to put toward a little bit because in the interest of time. Um, but if you would like me to email you um, the slides or the link to the letter through Pet Environment, um, put your name and email if you're interested in something specific that you hear uh, that, or I'll just send you everything. Um, but that's coming along. And then this is, is a little bit later on, but these are kind of some of those actions. So find your legislator. If you don't know who they are and you want to write a personal letter, all you have to do is put in your address and it will pop up with your state uh, representative, your state senator, your your federal rep, and your and your you know state senator or U.S. Congress. U.S. Yeah. senator. Thank you, mm -hmm. Congress people. Mm -hmm. um, and then you know calling, emailing, visiting. You can you can make an appointment and go and visit with your legislator at their local office, or you, you could go to Harrisburg if you wanted to, but you don't have to. Um, and those are also very impactful visits. That's something we're talking about as a team doing this year, saying here's what's important to us and to our congregation. We want you, you know, to to take action in these areas. Um, and those are very impactful actions. Um, okay, so we went through Reggie Community Solar. Um, I think this is really a cool thing, and I really hope it moves in the right direction. It's, it's on a lag. Oops. No, it's not. <laughs> All right, there we go. Okay, so I'll pass around a few informational pages on community solar. We might need a couple more of these if we um, can take one and pass it on. So the idea behind these and the and the the um, legislation that is has been proposed is to allow these ideas of community solar grids to be possible in our state. So if you live in a shady grove and there's no chance of sun on your house, but you really want you know, um, solar panels, 
Or if you live in an apartment building in North Philadelphia and you have no control over what is on the roof of your apartment building. Um, or if your roof is 20 years old and you don't have the money to get a new roof. So there's no structural integrity to put solar panels on your house. This is an opportunity for you to be able to buy into or lease a big old grid of solar panels out there in your community. Um, the benefit to that, because we know now in PA, we can choose our own electric supplier. You don't have to have Pico or whomever anymore. Um, we go with one called Green Mountain Energy so that our electricity is created by sustainable methods. The benefit, the, the increased benefit to this is you actually reap the benefits of these solar panels and that you receive a credit from whatever electricity they produce, which goes to reduce your electric bill. So you're, you're one utilizing solar energy and you're reaping an economic gain from it um, over time, depending on how much, you know, electricity is generated. Um, so we know that, you know, utilizing greener energy means that we don't need as much energy produced by coal or, you know, fossil fuels or anything that's more carbon emitting. So it's positive for the environment. Um, and then it just, it kind of moves our infrastructure in a, in a green direction and still gives you that benefit. So it's also something that can be um, beneficial to lower income segments of the community. You know, churches can buy into that type of thing. Um, so this is moving through right now. Um, it's been, these two bills have been proposed, one in the Senate, one in the House. Um, they're in committee and they're just kind of sitting in committee. So when you have a bill that sits in a committee, meaning it hasn't come on for a vote or anything yet, it's just, it's been proposed and it's just kind of hanging out. Um, something you can do in addition to writing a letter to your legislator saying support this is to email the committee chairs and say, all right, this is on your desk. It's been there for five months now. Can you please talk about it? bring it up for a, a vote in committee. And once that happens, then it can be passed to the wider legislature. Um, and so that's the case here. These things are out there. Um, they're written, the, the legislation is written, but it's kind of sitting in committee until it's, again, there's enough volume of support behind it to propel it forward. So I did bring, and these are letters that have been formed by LAMPA. Um, one for representatives, one for senators, pertaining to each bill. Um, that if you would like to today, you can fill out your name and your address because again, that dictates who it's delivered to and then sign it. And that's really all you have to do. If you would like to, you can write an additional note on it. But what we'd like to do is to gather several of these and then give them to Tracy at Lampa and she will take them by hand and say, these are from your constituents at Upper Dublin Lutheran Church advocating for these community solar initiatives. So I'll pass those around. And if, if that's something that you would like to do, great. If not, I also do have, I have the Senate bill here. The House bill didn't print because my computer was acting up, but I can send that to you. If you would actually like to read through the legislation before you decide that you want to write a letter about it, you certainly can do that. Or you can kind of say, well, yeah, community solar sounds good. I, I feel okay writing, you know, putting my name to that. So um, I'll pass. There are links to all of that, both the letters and the actual bills on our website. So that's the one to the representative. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. There are links, so I don't have to take one of these. I can print one out. Certainly. And when do you need them back? When does Tracy want them? I would say whenever we have a, you know, there's not necessarily a deadline. As I said, it's sitting in committee. It's not moving the way Reggie is at the moment. But so it's sort of building momentum that we want to do. However, so, however, yeah. however, however, however don't, don't, we could yeah. just all sign it today. Yeah. That way, at least we have a start. Yeah. Right. yeah. If, you, yeah. if you believe in it, let's sign it today. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, put it in okay. your mailbox. Or sure. That would be great. You can put it in my mailbox. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. You could um, give it to anybody you see here mm -hmm. on the team. Um, if you're particularly savvy, you could scan it and email it to me. <laughs> um, you could give it to Daddy. And anybody that's here today, would be fine if to you, get back to. If you do like go home and look at it more, you can always like bring it to the office and yeah. one of us will find it. Yep. 
Certainly. Yeah. Um, no, just ask them, the people who might want to write your personal letter. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. These are already signed. Woo! Wonderful. Yay! 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 And, and advocacy team, you're not a of this. No. I, 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 <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Of I'm course. pretty sure there's not enough for There's, I mean, I think there's there. 10. So we might need a couple. Yeah, I have a whole, I have a handful right here. You have the left. Yeah, yeah sure. like each of them. Here's, here's one. I pass them all that I don't come back to that. Okay, so that's community solar. Um, so I'm presenting the legislation I'm presenting at the state level is all on Lampa's agenda for this year. So that's where this is coming. There's more than I've pulled into this presentation. If you're interested, it's on Lambo's website. Um, but this this is where this comes from. So there's another um, issue May around I keep these to pass out. Sorry, May I keep these to give to other people. Are they the letters? Did, did everybody I get one that wants one? Because I, yeah, I don't know that everybody. Are they? Are there, there two different ones? There's, there's one that says "Dear Representative" right. and there's one that says "Dear Senator." Yeah. Could I have a "Dear Senator"? Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. There's one right here. If I put them together, that's okay. Thank you. Yeah. And if you don't know who you your want them legislator them. is, just leave it blank, and Tracy will figure that out and write that. You know, put that person's name in there. Okay, so we sign it and put our address. Yeah, and then on the front at the top, I put it. See if, if the like in the heading, there's a place for name and address also. For people who live in Lower Glenet as opposed to Ambler, make sure you put Lower Glenet only because otherwise it's going to end up in the wrong pile. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because it's, 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 it's all the same. And I've also I was also told at one point if your legal address is Lower Glenet, yeah, you sign it should put Lower Glenet rather than Ambler because that's she not said to leave it blank. Township. That's yeah. your post office. Do you have more down there, Patty? I think we still need a whole bunch more here. I need some. Just to complicate things more, I believe I heard that this that uh, Montgomery County is redistricting. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So your representative might change, and your district might change soon. I think Upper Dublin's more what that's worth. more likely yeah. to change. Than but you can always look online. Yeah, you can, you can always, always follow this link down down here. Find your legislator. So because that'll be updated when the redistricting happens, and then it will take you to the correct person. So these are two more initiatives. I'm going to roll through quickly, but just wanting you to know that they're there. Lead in, in school drinking water. It's a problem. So many oh, of our yeah. schools are very very antiquated and have plumbing of of the time that lead pipes were used. Um, or fittings or components. And so there is um, a bill moving through the house about uh, you know the ability for schools to test and remediate lead. And Abington School District found lead in their system. Oh my god. I mean, and these are just the ones 100 PA schools find lead in their drinking water. Those are just the ones who tested, who had the resources and the wherewithal to get tested. You know, not all schools have done that. Um, and so there is this, and this is a shorter bill. Um, so it, it is updating a law from 1949. Wow. Um, so that schools can test and remediate lead in their water. So this is just some additional information in that, in that area. Um, and then finally, um, in terms of um, state legislation. Um, this is House Bill 100. That's a specifically chosen number because the idea behind it is to get Pennsylvania to reach 100% renewable energy by 2050. Now, there's not much bipartisan support for this yet. This is sort of very new. This was just introduced last month. And right in the wake of the hurricane and tornadoes and flooding that we're experiencing in the area. Um, so House Bill 100, and I have a couple copies of that here. This is one that, that needs voices also. It needs, it needs you to reach out to your legislators and ask them to co-sponsor. Um, it, it just needs, um, you know, it's in the Environmental Resources and Energy Committee. Um, if you simply Google PA House Bill 100, it will take you to a page that gives you who, who um, sponsored it, it'll text, it'll link you to the text of the bill, it'll tell you what committee it's in, it'll tell you if anybody's voted on it yet, it'll give you a whole status update. And that's true of any of this legislation. So you don't have to go to any specific complicated link to find legislation. You simply have to Google PA 
And then it's either HB for House bill or SB for Senate bill and the number. And it'll bring up all the information that you need um, to, to learn more about it. Can I just share something with how, how is, uh, is contagious? I have a nephew who started at his church a, a box for people who had extra cloth bags. I mean, they call me the bag lady. I so many bags you know, to, to bring to church and eventually to use that when you go shopping, which worked dramatically. Well, what happened was, and people seeing that they could make a difference, they started paying more attention to some of the other things that you're speaking of. Mm -hmm. So little things can mm -hmm. go to big things. It builds, for yeah. sure. Um, this is just a little FYI. In, a, in next month, actually, no, already happening. Um, there is a UN climate change conference and um, it's called COP26, Climate Change yeah. Conference of Parties 26. Yeah. And the ELCA has a delegation there. Oh, Ooh, there you go. Oh my God. So that's the levels at which the ELCA is advocating. Um, they're involved. So, um, and this is, I, this is considered to be the most, in, the most impactful summit um, since the Par Paris Climate Accord was reached, because it's now now we're back in it and we're talking about how this is actually going to happen. So ELCA, we're being represented there. Um, and then the final area is sort of okay. Or I call it the organizational advocacy. What can we do in our own organization? Um, and ELC and and UDLC has been involved in this type of thing for a long time, trying to make our impact less. Um, there are some new opportunities. And so at a UDLC level, um, Tracy reached out to us directly. Um, Tracy who? Dee Pasquale from Lampa. Okay, thank you. Um, there is an initiative between ELCA World Hunger and an agency called Witness and Society, which is offering support for ministries, specific ministries, to reduce your greenhouse gas emissions. So what they are offering is for a person from this group to give you an assessment of kind of where are your emissions, how much are you emitting, um, and then to give you proposals that can help you to make changes to reduce the impact you're having in your immediate community, whether it's energy efficiency, your water usage, reducing your waste, all of these kinds of things. And then to give resources, there's funding for this here, there's, you know, how to move forward. It so happens that our church council and Adam Jacob specifically, as we're considering what to do with the heating system here, is looking into what sustainable options are out there for us that we can participate in um, as we're replacing our heating system. So I sent this information to him and um, talked with Judy Mosser, our council president, about it. And they're interested. Now, we also know that they're dealing with everything else going on in the church right now, right? And it's easy for things to slide by the wayside. So if it's something that you would like to see UDLC participate in, looking at our greenhouse gas emissions and thinking about how we can better utilize our resources and reduce our impact, then I would encourage you to speak out at this level to Adam, to Judy, to anybody you know on council. Um, their names and pictures are in the. Uh, their names lobby. and pictures are in the, the lobby. <laughs> so is is this is the ELCA along with this World Hunger and Witness offering to send somebody free of charge and yeah. evaluate? Basically, you're saying the whole plant, not just not any particular ministry. So I think they like kind of allow you to guide it. You know, they, they say with your um, your ministry priorities kind of thing. So, but but yes, it can be as comprehensive or as specific I think as you would like it to be. So if you reach out and say, you know, we're going to be replacing our heating system, we want to think about what type of system we're going to utilize. What are we going to invest in? Is there any funding for that that could offset the cost of that? You know, and, and they would kind of walk with our church through that process. Um, 
We've been going to replace that boiler for how many years, guys? Right. So, but we're poised oh, that it's forever. time to, to make a big choice. Well, last year. Yeah. You know, that will be very long reaching yes. for our building. Yeah. And so, some of you probably know that we're in this, the early stages yet, but we're in this strategic planning process. And one of the strategic areas in that draft plan is stewardship, like it, it improves stewardship of our resources and stewardship of the environment. Um, and so things like replacing the heating system in a more sustainable way go right, like they are right there baked into this plan that UDLC is crafting for the future. Um, and so this is one way that that could happen. And so it is absolutely the time to speak up and, and um, make it known that this is a priority of this congregation. Yes, a thousand percent. Um, and that's not to under they're, they're all they're, they were very excited to receive this information it was it was warmly received um so mm -hmm. you know there's not necessarily a a conflict to be had there we're just so hey i heard about this this is really cool we really mm -hmm. hope that you know you're able to make well, this especially if make this money action <laughs> you know i mean but there is there right. could be grants there could be some funding it may not you know be covering everything but it could be um helpful tax incentives and things like that so there's there's that and then um here. i'm sorry yeah, just a, a, another little small thing in comparison to the water the heater system is i was talking to steve merritt last week about the lights that shine on the cross that that project the two cross uh symbols on the white wall beyond behind it which i really miss because the lights are missing and they've blown out on one side so he was saying what they're trying to look into is replacing those incandescent lights with lcd lights LED. and LED, led lights and <laughs> uh, led yeah, we're... lights which are obviously uh save energy mm -hmm. and uh wouldn't have to be replaced as often right as often because they're very 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 <laughs> expensive right but in the long haul they're less expensive i know right. yes yeah. right. exactly. so it's on the radar yeah. It's well, definitely on the radar. I mean, it's a small Dee and I are both on the property right. committee. Right. I don't remember the exact figure, but I got to tell you, it is jaw dropping. Yes. The proposals that we've got for those LED lights. But you got to understand, too, that we have guys who get up on scaffolding yeah. to replace them, and they said, We're not True. doing that anymore. So, right. Uh, and to hire someone to do and that. And to hire somebody to do that is yeah. very expensive, too. Very expensive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, um, being on the property committee, do you know that ELCA on their website do have for under care of creation and has a whole way of um, doing an evaluation of your property? You don't have to hire somebody to come in and do it and just to look around it and come up with ideas of ways to be more energy efficient. Did, huh. Were you aware of that? We've not talked about mm -hmm. that to the best of my recollection. I'll see if I can. Uh, Hmm. Wow. So mm -hmm. because I mean and it's this it's this whole idea of getting everybody involved with yeah. individuals but also at the community level. How you know how efficient is your plan? Where if you use your hands I'm at church, I'll call you later. They mean we could sell them one at a time to the congregation. So you know buy the buy a lamp. Why a whole? <laughs> you know, a group of people get together as a fundraiser, like you know, get a couple groups together. Yeah, you know, that you, you could. I mean, we sponsored bricks on the sidewalk. Exactly. Yeah. Nice Christmas. I mean, a little crowdfunding opportunity. Just tell how much it was job dropping. Uh, no, I, I have no memory of that. Yeah. 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 It was. It's a lot. I mean, we're talking thousands. We're not talking hundreds. Yes, but it's now because they all have all of the lights oh, all in place. We're talking thousands of dollars wow. yeah, with the system. And I think so. Yeah. Next week, you're having from Marge Monster, Mad Monster, yes. come to talk about sort of a more local level mm -hmm. what, you can do. what you can do more locally. Oh. Um, and so that's that sort of I think segues into that topic. Um, and, and I'm, I know she's going to have a lot of really wonderful ideas. Um, one thing, the last thing I wanted to point out, and then I got a bolt because my best friend's having a baby shower right now, um, is that if any of you are Thrivent members, 
they have what are called drive-in action teams. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've done, we've done a few of them. I use that to purchase rain barrels for my house and a few of my neighbors. You can utilize that resource for local advocacy efforts or local um, environmental action. So just so you know that, you know, just to think about it in that way, when you're hearing Madge talk about that next week, um, you know, some of the local watersheds, like we support the Tippecanoe Taconi watershed, which is our watershed. Here it's, what's the again? Um, sometimes they'll have opportunities, you know, they'll do a little seminar and then you pay 75 bucks and you get a water barrel. Um, but if you can get $250 from Thrivevent and show that you're impacting your community and you bring your neighbor to the, the um, presentation, then there you go and you have that, that done. So just another little resource to, to recall that we have access to if you're a Thrivevent member. Um, I'm, that pretty much does it for us. Um, thank you for having us. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure and an honor.